I've got uh, four or five things to go over and uh, appreciate you uh, taking time out of your schedule to be with us. And uh, we've got uh, some people we're going to hear from here in a few time. If you want to start with the, the update on the educator effectiveness, Mr. Bale, if you've got yeah. some update on that. Yeah, I'm going to try to do the best I can with that today. Uh, Y'all got questions? Everybody got questions about it? or? Just give us a general update. Okay, general update on that. Uh, we're uh, working with Miss Stephanie McLean from the State Department. We started this process last year, uh, sort of converting from the Educate Alabama format to a format called Educator Effectiveness. Okay, we had uh, probably about 25 to 30 people. We met about six times. We had people from uh, all venues. We had uh, counselors, principals. Uh, from all over the county and we developed a plan to implement our goal was to try to get it implemented at the beginning of this year it didn't happen so it's going to be next year when we get that in so kind of we're going back and forth a little bit with educate alabama and educator effectiveness now in the meantime the state come out with a pilot program to try to merge these two because plan 2020 wanted us to have educator effectiveness in place and Mr. McDuffie from the State Department uh, allowed us to be part of the pilot program. So we've had a few glitches here and there on uh, the interface going from one to the other. And I've been working this week to really try to get that fixed so that everybody, that all teachers can complete their self-assessment and their PLP. Now, with that being said, uh, our district on Educate Alabama there were 39 indicators that all teachers had to choose from. And most of the time, each school, some schools would do a school-wide indicator for the teachers to pick. We chose to do a district-wide indicator this year. But uh, with working with Ms. McClain from the State Department, we cut 39 down to 17 to make it a little easier for the teachers to do. But in doing that, uh, and combining it with this pilot program, the I guess the, the computer part of it is not running smooth right now. Uh, it's like I was telling some of the supervisors there, we figured out yesterday that our ARI coaches can't get on there. The way we've got them coded, I guess, in Ed Dirt, they can't get on there. So they're trying to fix that so that those eight to 10 people would be able to get on there. Uh, but for this year, it'll be very similar to what it's been in the past. Uh, all non-tenured teachers, and get uh, two to three, at least two evaluations. Uh, if you're on cycle, which is a, a three-year cycle, the way each principal's got, they got it divided into thirds. Uh, those uh, teachers would be on a full evaluation cycle. Usually two 20-minute observations at least, at least two 20-minute observations, and then some walkthroughs to get them usually equal about 60 minutes of total observation. It's kind of where we're, what we're looking at here. And that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. I, I've been asking the schools today to try to, to solve some technical issues, uh, and again, it's nothing to do with our computers. It's a it's just the way that these teachers have been put into the computer, and I think on the supercomputer end, I think they're working hard to make those ARI coaches be able to be seen. That's kind of that's kind of that's kind of where we're at on that. Anybody have any questions for Mr. I know that I know I kind of jumped around there, but it's it's been uh, it's been wide open on that. So basically, at this point in time, folks need to be <coughs> working to complete their self-assessment, their yes. professional learning plan, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So and, and then and then we tied in one of our indicators to uh, uh, you know using technology. That was one that I made out of district-wide indicator, and then there was one other indicator since we're doing a lot of different things with the uh, uh, SREB that would tie in perfectly with it. And I just suggested that one to the principals when I sent that out. You know, I told them they do whichever one they wanted to, but I, everybody do 3.7, and then if you've got several teachers doing the SREB, then put them on 2.6 or let them choose another one. So like I said, by you know by by next week, hopefully all the bugs are worked out and the PLP. Some of them, some teachers already got on it, got the PLPs done. The ones that have not had any problems. Come back, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we uh, hope I hope all of you are aware by this point we're in the midst of a significant or major network upgrade, and in 
that transition phase, and uh, we think that's going well. But we have some guests with us today that yes. are going to give us an update on where we stand. We have some, some guests, and, and I just want to say real quickly, we've been very pleased with the process of how this has went. Uh, back, you know, when I first took office, uh, this was kind of laid on the desk, and we started working through this and wanted to make sure we took the right steps to make sure that uh, we didn't have missteps steps because I knew that it was a major multi million dollar project and didn't want any foul steps on, on, on following through with it. Uh, so we read it out the process and the folks that were going to be doing it, and uh, after we met with them, we were very pleased with what we heard, and of course, as we got into the process, very pleased with what we experienced and, and, and how we went through the process and couldn't be happier with it. Uh, how that's when we've had some hurdles that we've worked through, but everybody's worked really, really well together. Uh, the team is really good and glad. Uh, last week, actually, I, I spoke to Stephen Cocker, who's our main network engineer here, who's kind of helping get this going. And it's late notice, he lives in Mississippi, so it's not like he can just drive here. Uh, and I said, easily, and I, I said, you know, we got a board meeting next week. I think it'd be really good if, you know, one of y'all could maybe, uh, you know, uh, to talk to the I, I wasn't necessarily meaning, you know, him, there's people who live a little closer, but of course he's here tonight and brought some other folks with him. So I think that shows to the commitment of them as a partner for us, and uh, I appreciate it. And I'm going to let uh, them speak. And uh, Stephen, and uh, Stephen Cocker, of course, he, he, he's where well, truly Nathan White, uh, Stephen Skillman, and uh, Xavier, and I sound like Xavier was him. Uh, so we're proud to have them here. I, I think Stephen's going to be uh, the one who does some of the talks that he made the first me and to the those as, as they go. Uh, really pleased and proud to introduce Stephen here to let him come up here. Well, you can see the Nathan, y'all come on up. Nathan, I know he's chomping at the Well, guys, I, again, Nathan White. I uh, just want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Barnett and the board for letting us speak. Uh, you know, it's a very daunting uh, project that Dr. Barnett vetted us very hard. I actually called, I came from Elmore County, I actually called my former employees or employers to make sure that I was legit. But, uh, you know, we've been super, super uh, thankful for all of the schools, the administration. We've, we've worked with power companies, um, administrators, you name it. Uh, Cindy and her staff have been excellent. Uh, it's, it's been a huge project. Over 160 switches, 70,000 feet of fiber going and just connecting internal uh, closets. So daunting, daunting process. I think right now we're five schools completed. Um, you know, ultimately our goal with looking looking at this and, and, and uh, you know, when Dr. Barnett sat down with us, it's we're not looking to throw equipment at, at the problem. We're looking at improving the learning spaces and the environment, cutting down on headaches for your teachers, and then ultimately, you know, improving engagement uh, in the classroom and then providing consistent and reliable wireless and, and, and network connectivity. So, uh, again, I'm, I'm going to sit down and let the brains of the operation. I, I'm, I'm the account manager for the for North Alabama and for you guys, and uh, but this guy is the one that's made it all happen along with our sub. So. I will defer to him uh, with progress and any kind of questions. Thanks, Nathan. So just to echo what he said, we're so appreciative of the opportunity that, that you've given us to work on your network. And so just to rattle off the numbers, over 160 switches, 70,000 feet of fiber, but beyond that, completely forklift in your network. So every device at every school that touches the internet or internally, printers, all that stuff, is getting um, new IP addresses, new stuff. So there is not a device that's left unturned as a part of this project. And so the scope of it is massive. And so as Nathan said, we've completed five schools. Uh, they're 100%. Um, we're gonna turn over two schools next week. So the plan tentatively, barring some sort of unforeseen weather delay, is to turn over next week um, Collinsville, the, the schools there, and then uh, Valley End. So we're going to turn those over next week. But um, what we're seeing is as we turn those over and get them on the new subnets and all that fun stuff, uh, anywhere from a 30 to 60% throughput improvement. So what that means is 30, 30 to 60% faster for your students when they go from their device to the internet. Okay. So beyond that, there's also a massive uptime improvement. Right? We're seeing work ticket requests and those things are greatly minimized and the user satisfaction experience seems to be significantly better. 
So saying all that, um, the ultimate goal of this project is to make the network accommodating and obviously usable. So <clears throat> those are the two things we want to do is we want to not only put technology in the hands of your students so that they can use to learn, but also that they can depend on that technology as they go on throughout the year. So I feel like where we've been, we've done that. We will continue to do that, and um, with your patience, we'll continue to work through it. So like I said, everybody that we've worked with has been phenomenal, so patient, so helpful, and we're very grateful for each and every team member. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to take those. The schools you've got complete. Yes, sir. You're fine. Uh, is there any big hang-ups or anything that stands out that we're still lacking on that, or are we pretty well on no. the not at this time. Now, initially, when we turned over the first school, there were things that we learned where we went back and redid some things. And so we turned over Jody first. And there were some issues that we uncovered that we were not anticipating. And so we rehauled, redesigned, implemented those. And since that time, we have not we've not seen significant issues. No, sir. Okay. Good. What well, was some of the other schools? Uh, we're done in the Crossville community, so those three locations, we just turned over Ida. Hey, hey, Geraldine, we, we started, we had a plan for how we approach this, and we started with the school that had the worst network connectivity and all that, and kind of went to the best, the better, the better schools. And so we've eliminated a lot of these major areas that we had problems at. And so by doing so, that's really eliminated a lot of frustration, concerns, not that there aren't still some out there where we haven't been, but you know, uh, in drilling, uh, one thing he uncovered was, you know, they, well, there wasn't enough addresses to get everything on there, and so once it was getting bogged down, there, people were still having connectivity issues, because they just wanted enough addresses for people to grab onto, their devices to grab onto. So one day Stephen called me, he's like, I, I found out what the problem is, it's this, this, we're going to have to do this. Uh, I said, well, you know, when can we do it? He said, well, I'm on my way from Mississippi right now. <laughs> and so he came and we sat down uh, right down there, and, and uh, he got got everything. They, 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 the team was sitting there working, Tyler and Cindy and uh, Stephen, they got everything ready, and, and, and they called into the supercomputer and got that handled, and they had a whole list the next morning to do, and it just, you know, went real seamlessly. So that, that kind of support is, is awesome. Uh, to expedite it, you know, we got it going. They brought in a, an extra team of the one of their uh, subcontractors just pulling fibers. So they got, uh, you know, you wanted to make sure that we knew all the processes and catch all these things first. Uh, so we went, you know, had one team. Do, it took a little bit longer in drilling because drilling to large campus. It took a little longer. Some of these other schools. Now we got two teams that are pulling fibers. So in theory, we should be able to go twice as fast uh, over the next half of our project as we have on the front half of it. So I think that is really uh, exciting, and so I, I'm, I'm, I'm greatly pleased with uh, what these gentlemen um, have done as far as supporting our team in doing what we're doing here, so I'm, I'm pleased. And, and lastly, just to speak to the accommodation, one of the things that Miss Cindy and her team did was when we went to Geraldine, um, the way that a, a teacher or student gets onto the network is different from a wireless perspective. And so we sat down and we had a bring your own device day where we said, hey, don't care what it is, if you want it on the network, whether it's your phone or your, your computer, bring it. We'll put it on for you. We'll show you how to use it. We had a tremendous response to that. We spent three to four hours onboarding devices. And so we replicated that at schools. And as we go, we're going to continue to communicate that to uh, communities moving forward. So, um, you know, your students, teachers at, in your communities, please let them know that when we do that, please take advantage of it because you know, we're there and, and it helps us find problems if there are some while we're there. So it's a massive time saver for us as well. But again, just to be accommodated, we want to make sure we do those things. Well, on the former network, I make it looks like I got some. So on the former network, we, there was a whitelist and every device had to be whitelisted and had to be uh, put put on there and you had to know all that information. Now, people are, all of our users are going to have a login where they'll have their username and their password and that's how they'll gain access to the network, which will allow them to have a good user experience and, do all the things that they need to do. Uh, there's also a guest user where in the past, you know, we would have, you know, whether it be uh, some of our insurance providers or different folks that, that were required to, to come and meet with our employees, and they may go out to Collinsville or Crossville, and they may not have uh, the whitelist to that, and they, 
they sometimes couldn't do what they needed to do. So I think this is going to be uh, a really good, really good setup for how it, how it's going to be be implemented, pushed out there. Um, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to finish up by saying, you know, tying it back to the students. Uh, outside of just the networking project, we found some some things with like your active directory, so how your your teachers and students actually log on. So, you know, we're keeping we're Stephen actually was working on that today. We're mindful of you know how long you know computers are taking to log in and, and just the user experience as a whole. Uh, so it, it, we really are trying to take it to that next level, make things, clean up things, make it easier, time, you know, with it, whether it's their Google accounts uh, and what have you. So we're trying to keep that in mind as, as we come across uh, other issues. It may have been that we've heard from uh, either Cindy, uh, her staff, or just, you know, your stakeholders out in the communities, things that have been kind of sticking points and things that have been a, a pain point in the past. We're trying to address those on top of, you know, just not just putting in the network. We're trying to leave this better than what we came in with, and, and I think we're doing a great job. But again, Cindy's staff has been in paramount in, in you know, allowing us to you know, share our ideas, bounce them off, you know, get that pushback when we need to, because ultimately you guys know what's best for your community. We're, you know, we're, we're just guests in this network. You have to deal with it. Uh, you know the consequences of us being here, so uh, we, we really do appreciate uh, the input and, and you know again the being patient with this progress. Obviously, it's something that's it's taken multiple months. It still has probably another month and a half left, um, but we're excited to see the the after effects and see the great things that in turn happen in the future when you're not having to worry about the reliability of a network. You can really focus on the, you know, your learning environments and taking that next step. So, uh, again, we appreciate that. If you have any questions, um, and, and, uh, we'll, we'll make ourselves available afterwards if there's anything specific to a community that you guys want to do. Good. So, uh, we appreciate you guys. But based on what you said, you're anticipating probably somewhere by the end of this year to finish up. Yes, sir. Okay. Whether uh, sure. That's a, a reasonable expectation. Good. And and also just real quickly I introduce Stephen Please. Skillman. Um, so Stephen lives over in Blunt County. Um, he's a network engineer as well, and he's going to be helping with some more of the day to day stuff. Um, that because of my geography, I, I can. Uh, he's going to be here more day to day, helping bang through some of those issues. So I anticipate things to ramp up rapidly for you um, as a result of having him here on site. Anybody else have any other questions? Thank you guys. We sure appreciate it. Appreciate you guys and what you're doing here for us. Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, done had some discussions with Snyder, Lynch, and Doresco, and uh, there are what matters, I guess, there. And uh, um, I guess we did a some kind of meeting with them. So you know what, what, what we did is we sent out, uh, we had a meeting a while back, and uh, we we, we, sent, or we, we sent out a request for proposal, a uh, request for qualifications, excuse me, with, uh, uh, to just to, to, we posted it, published it, anybody who wanted to send, you know, to attend the uh, uh, pre-meeting was able to. Uh, it was open to anyway, anybody, and so we just kind of put that out there. We had three, uh, three companies, three, three entities that showed up and expressed some interest in it. They showed up in our pre-meeting, that was uh, Schneider Electric, uh, Noresco, and Every What Matters. Now, all three of those companies, uh, two weeks after that initial meeting, they, there was a deadline, which was last Thursday a week ago today, to submit their qualifications. And there was a list of parameters that we required to be in their uh, qualifications. All three did submit one, as I, as I suggested. Uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Stone from Moresco, he's actually here, he's back there. Uh, good, to, good to have you here with us tonight. Appreciate that. Appreciate the work that you put into this package. Uh, all, all three did put in a good package, and, and uh, we, we've been kind of working through that proposal. Uh, Crystal's worked very heavily going through that, making sure all the, the requirements were in there. Brian's looked at it very thoroughly as well, and we've all kind of been working on it. Uh, we've, we've narrowed down to make sure who has the qualifications of the required qualifications, and so now uh, we're going to, to start flipping through there and kind of distinguishing. We're going, we've got a, a team we're working to put together to uh, analyze all the things and make sure that we're able to, uh, you know, present a, uh, a, 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 
company uh, to do this that will be able to do everything that we need them to do in a, a qualified and reasonable amount of time. But I think we've got some good options here. I think there are uh, some companies here that can do a really good thing for us so we won't have a hard hard time making some decisions. So it's, it's going to be a good process. But uh, we're, we're excited. I'm excited personally about this. I see it being very beneficial to our district uh, and our, our energy consumption and, and everything. So I'm, I just want to update you on us moving forward with that. And that's kind of where we are. So, uh, about last Thursday, these packages are pretty extensive. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it was too ambitious to have it ready prepared for the night. But maybe by the next board meeting, uh, we'll, we'll have to have time to go through there and, and feel comfortable moving in that direction. Just like we did originally, we want to make sure we feel very comfortable with this. Uh, process. So I'm excited about that and uh, moving forward on that. Yeah. I like those kind of projects. It gives you opportunity to uh, do something good, not just now, but if it's a long term benefit right. yeah, yeah. system. As, I, as I've said time and time again up here, I, it's kind of, you know, I don't know, I kind of beat it in. You know, we've got 300 HVAC units that are over 30 years old in the campaign. I mean, from one, just from an efficiency standpoint, I was speaking to an electrician just the other day who replaced an HVAC unit in his home that was that was seven years old and replaced it with a new newer one. And he said he was his annual consumption this year was averaging forty dollars less per month. And that's one that was seven years old. You start taking talking about three hundred that are thirty year old, the savings could be just unreal, just this there. Then all the other things that we do and Voice over internet protocol and some of the other options. Uh, and, uh, you know, one company uh, has energy uh, production component that, that could be an option. So there's a lot to consider there. A lot to consider, and I think we've got. I'm not sure that we can go wrong with, with it, but we're going to try to select a, a company that fits our needs best. Very good. Appreciate that. Uh, advanced data. Yeah, we, we met with Dave Vance said uh, earlier this week on Monday, uh, uh, Dr. Andre Harrison, who's the executive director of their organization, came up, he and Gary Ricker, uh, they came and he's the uh, uh, specialist for uh, instructional improvement or some, something along those lines. And he met with us, uh, they both met with us earlier this week and we went through our assessment that we originally put out where we identified our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our obstacles. Of, uh, you know, for, for some of those different areas, our resources, our instruction, and, and, and uh, different things. And so we, we, we went through it very thoroughly. Uh, there were a couple things that, that they identified as us that they really, Andre Harrison actually called me later that night. He said, I want to thank you. He said, that was one of the most thorough and well developed and presented, uh, you know, plans that, that we, we've had. It was really well given. And I give that to the team. Uh, we had a supervisor team and some, uh, some other folks who, who helped participate in producing that document. I basically put a Google Doc and I said, you know, here's, here's the section that I want you to focus on. Here's the standards underneath our resources. I want you to help identify our strengths, our weaknesses, our opportunities, and our challenges to do in these things. And everybody kind of worked together. We met, we talked through it, we, we put it, made a nice document. And, and we were very honest. We presented the strengths that we saw. We, uh, present the weaknesses as we saw them. And sometimes some of those weaknesses obviously translated into real opportunities for us. But there are some obstacles to reaching those things. So it went really well and uh, he, he called and was uh, very complimentary for that. So I commend the team for helping to put that together. They, they had a big hand that they did have a hand in that. Uh, but it was really good. A couple of things that uh, moving forward we hope to have an on site review tentatively for February, March of nineteen. That's not set in stone yet, but that is something that I believe would be ambitious, but yet reasonable. We want to move forward with that. There's a lot we're learning about ourselves through this process. Uh, in the meantime, there's a couple of things that we they encourage us to begin working on. One being, you know, our Elliott training uh, for our administrators. Uh, that's a, that's a uh, you know observation type protocol that they do, and that's something that we we do have some that are certified and trained in that. But we need to continue to do that. Uh, a strategic plan. Uh, they don't identify our outlook, how we do that. Uh, we, as a board, have heard from some folks who do that. I've, I've talked to another gentleman today who uh, does that line of work. Actually, today has come and does that line of work, and I actually invited him to our next work session. Uh, so, 
uh, he, he'll be coming for that. So that's something that we need to do. Of course, we don't have to do that outside. We do that ourselves. But that, that's just some opportunities. We've obviously got a lot of things going on. And so we're, we're spread thin in some areas. Uh, but I'm excited about what we're, what we're doing in that. Uh, so I think we're moving in the right direction with that. I've heard a lot of positive from our local schools about that. Um, we, we've got four campuses that are not accredited right now. And this, of course, will do away from that. So basically, after the meeting the other day, uh, we went from, you know, prospects. We are now district uh, accredited candidates. And so I uh, would kind of tip the bird from, you know, just simply an applicant to a candidate now. Uh, so which means we, we're, we're really, you know, teetering on getting this work done. So I'm, I'm excited to make the world go in this process in just, you know, a few months since we kind of started. Because it, it is a big process. Yeah. Great. Okay, uh, I got one, one out of here that kind of doesn't make sense. Okay. <laughs> uh, obviously, we got new mics here tonight, so hopefully you all can hear it a little bit better. Uh, one thing that we've been meaning to do, not that you need, not that you really want to hear. Yeah, I got <laughs> So that is kind of the first step of, of an overhaul. We, we, we do a lot of presentations in here. Uh, we have a lot of professional development opportunities. Here, of course, we have our board meetings. It's been an issue uh, over time, you know, people coming in here and being able to hook up their own device over here, their own laptop or whatever, connecting. So uh, this was kind of the first deal, but also Brian is ordered and it should be coming in any day now. A, uh, I guess a kiosk, I don't know what the right word would be. Basically it's going to be sitting over here and it's going to have, you know, a computer and all the stuff that we'll need to present. So that means anybody who comes in to, uh, you know, to, to do a presentation or a, a a uh, professional level opportunity that I have everything they need already set up, all we wired our speakers, we wired our projector, uh, the, the microphones, or whatever, anything we need will already be set up. Basically, you know, uh, it'll be ready to present when they plug in their, their uh, you know, drive or whatever. Of course, they'll also have a plug, you know, they can plug in their own laptop if that's how they choose to. But that being said, it'll be, uh, it'll make it a lot easier, more efficient. Hopefully, we won't have to, you know, Call in the technology, come down here, we can get this going or that going. So, hopefully, that will eliminate a lot of our issues with that. That's something that we've wanted to do for a while. It's finally coming, to, uh, finally coming toward uh, finishing that up. And uh, we, we did want to put one of our, we did want to do something without you know, involving our students. Uh, so, uh, the one we got is real futuristic. I mean, it looks really like the Jetsons kind of stuff, you know. And so it's really nice, but it's just futuristic. But we wanted something that looked a little bit kind of matched our thing. It matched, you know, how we have up here. So I've, I talked to Mr. Joey Hanging, a teacher at Sylvania, and he's going to design like a little cabinet and have his ag students work on that project and put that together for us. And it'll still be functional and look, look really nice and match everything. Like this, like this up here that uh, Joey and uh, Ben Johnson had a uh, a drill being did for us. So we're really excited about that. Speaking of students working on projects, I know uh, you guys have, have all seen our new sign from the central office administrator. Right. Uh, I want to thank Scott Phillips and his uh, masonry students for the work they did on that sign. That is an awesome uh, job. They did a fantastic work on that. That is a real community uh, community learning service project. I mean, they, they you know, they serve as it's community learning. They're, doing, they're learning on the job skills where they left the technical school, come out there, they, you know, worked on the, the whole project, did it really good. Uh, students with varying skill levels participated in different ways. Uh, some of the first year students got involved in, uh, in, in you know, making the mud and mixing all the mortar and all that stuff, while some of the more seasoned students actually laid bricks. But everybody who was there got to do Know, put part of that putting it together. So we were really encouraged and excited by that, and I think it turned out uh, just really, really nice. We've got to get uh, maintenance over there to finish up hooking up our lights now that we've got that done. They've been busy on some projects, but I'm really excited to have that going. And of course, the fact that uh, the fact that students did it, that, that says a lot. Including incorporating our students into doing stuff like that, that means extra as well. Yeah, great. It does look, it does look professional. Yeah, it's great. Um, DEA and SPO, we are certainly glad to have you with us tonight. I'll start with DEA. Do you have anything we need to discuss? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. And I want to thank you for the other night. We uh, enjoyed it. I did, anyway. Um, and thanks for meeting again. You're able to 
we get together some discuss some issues that come up in our meetings or that are brought to my attention. It's, we just get together to discuss things. It's nice to ask a question and get an answer. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you. And I will say this, I'm still enjoying the other night's nice meeting. <laughs> Every day I've been eating something from you. Yeah. <laughs> You've got Mary Jo Chandler's cake and dogs were eating over here. I tell you, uh, Mark. Not sick yet, but you know, everything's going good. Well, Mark was working on that watermelon when I talked to him earlier today. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I'm sure he brought that. I'm sure he brought that. Thank you for the and we're very thankful that all of you showed up that did and I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, we always have plenty of good questions for you and of course you know we expect everything we ask for us. Yeah. So, because we got some good promises, particularly from Mark. <laughs> you know, Mark's a little bit of a rebel anyway. Yeah. Okay. Anybody uh, in, in the audience, any issues, any questions, anything we need to address? Okay, Bob. Lord, just thank you for your, your many blessings, Lord. We come to you, Lord, with a humble heart, asking God that you touch our school system, uh, touch these uh, gentlemen who make decisions for our school system. I uh, pray for this day, Lord, that you will be done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
Okay, so on the job injury. Uh, we have three on the job injuries. Uh, would you like me to do those again? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. April Baird, elementary teacher in Sylvania, that's one and a half days. Uh, then we have Joy Mitchell, elementary teacher in Sylvania, uh, zero days. And Lee Long, uh, elementary teacher in Lynn Lake, zero days. Okay, third recommendation, sir. Motion. Make a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. And we have some people who have uh, reached that happy time of retirement. We do. We got three of uh, them. We got three, three retirements. Uh, I recommend we approve the retirement from Mr. Kenneth Gilbert, bus driver at Plainview High School, effective November the 1st. Uh, the, uh, I recommend we accept the uh, retirement of Mr. Jerry Syrene, bus driver at Sylvania High School, retirement January the 1st. I believe that should be 17 there. Uh, recommend we accept the uh, uh, retirement from Ms. Amber Robinson, uh, CMP worker at Collinsville. Uh, excuse me, that's a resignation. That's a resignation on retirement uh, from Mr. Amber Robinson at Collinsville High School and a resignation from Mr. Chris Kaus, bus driver at Collinsville High School. Okay. The current superintendent's recommendations. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Okay. I'll so, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Uh, leaves of absence. Is there any reason not to take all these together? Anybody want to pull me out? We've all seen that. Uh, I recommend we approve the following leaves of absence. Uh, Mr. Renee, former bus driver at Collinsville, uh, beginning October 16th through the end of the year. Uh, Ms. <coughs> Haley Bryant, <coughs> beginning October 5th through December 15th. Uh, Ms. Janet Duckett, elementary teacher at Sylvania, uh, September the 21st uh, through October the 20th. Uh, Ms. Monica Goodwin, uh, special ed aide at Five Special Service Center, October the 12th through November the 13th. Uh, Ms. Belinda Tilly, uh, math teacher at Collinsville, uh, September the 6th, or December the 15th, that is an extension. Uh, Ms. Whitney Stiefel, elementary teacher at Drillbeck High School, uh, December the 7th through February the 5th. Uh, Mr. Sam McKinney, bus driver at Collinsville, October the 12th through November the 27th. Ms. Tammy Miller, bus driver at Collinsville, uh, October the 5th through November the 9th. <coughs> uh, math teacher at Sylvania, uh, that's February the 12th. Through April the 12th of 18. Uh, Mr. Ms. Teresa Jameis, elementary teacher at Ider, November the 27th through December the 14th. And Ms. Uh, Morella Munoz, a uh, Spanish teacher at Ider and Henniger, half day uh, in that period is through October 23rd through December the 18th. Okay, you've heard the superintendent's recommendations. There are motions. Make a motion. <coughs> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Okay, placements. Together? Uh, no, no, sir. Right. Recommend a placement Ms. Megan Gilbert, general science teacher, for a leave until December the 31st at Ida High School. We're going to retro, make that retroactive back to December, or excuse me, back to October the 16th. Okay. Certainly, so, okay. today's is there a motion? I make a motion. Okay, there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Let's skip that one just a second. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't see uh, support. Ms. Juanita Simpson, bus driver, take route at five. Uh, make that retroactive back to 822. Okay. You've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Recommend the replacement of Mr. Lucas Bless, computer hardware software technician, uh, 10 month of Okay. You've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion? Make a motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, I recommend we place Ms. Susan Stoner, CMP worker at Collinsville High School. Okay. Refer to the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 
Okay, we've got about three pages, looks like, of coaching supplements. And uh, we're not going to at this point, so we're not going to read all those now. They're all on here. They're listed by school. So, uh, Mr. Superintendent, if you want to make a recommendation that we approve all these coaching supplements for 9A through 9I with all these coaches, I think we'll do that all along. All at one time, I think that'd be good. I recommend we approve the coaching supplements uh, for Collinsville High School, Crossville High School, Crossville Middle, Five High, Drilling High, Ider High, Plainview High, Selena High, and Valley Head High uh, as listed on your sheet. Okay. Heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Well, I'd like to move through about three pages of the agenda about that. Okay, okay. that's good. Thank you, you guys. We have a, a three volunteer coaches. I think we do all three of those. One by the final four of that. We'll do with those. All three of them. I recommend volunteer coach Mr. Tony Keith uh, at Snyder High School, Mr. Will Jacob basketball at Selena High School, uh, and Mr. <coughs> Mr. Ron Stoviak soccer at Selena High School. Okay, you've heard the superintendent's recommendation. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Contracts, I think you do all those one time as well. Recommends following contracts. Uh, Miss Kathy Butts, uh, it's homebound at local. Mr. Wayne Wilson, that's lawn care at IBAB. Uh, the Learning Tree uh, for Applied Behavior Analysis, IBAB. Jessica Holander, second grade child find gifted. Uh, Jasmine Jimenez, ESL Instructional Support for Pre K at Title Three. Uh, Tracy Tidmore, DBA, Academy Tutor Local. And Miss Jackie Davis, 5CMP. Okay, heard the recommendation. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Or second. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And I, and I do want to go back up to AB. I, I, okay. um, I'm going to recommend uh, that we place uh, Joanna Howell, elementary teacher, at our high school that is uh, uh, leave until December the 15th. Okay. Heard the superintendent's recommendation. Sir, I'm sure. We make a motion. Okay. Is there a second? Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Superintendent's recommendation. <coughs> CMP, uh, they, they're looking for a point, they're trying to update their uh, point of sale to cloud based software. We've had uh, some issues with backing up and some things like that. And, and so it's through Harris Solutions, a vendor that we use. Uh, through a lot of different programs, been very successful, done a great job, and we're wanting to build their uh, point sale cloud based software, and that is at a price of $42,598. Okay. You've heard the recommendation. Is there a motion? Make a motion. Second. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. Okay, drilling property, we've, we've signed our contracts, we've done all that, we're waiting on the deed. So it has been a cut, pay, checks have been cut. It's been a long process to get that. We've had a lot of hurdles, but we, we finally got that uh, here to close days. So we've done all that, we just applied for the deed and everything, so we're waiting on getting that back. You think so we might be cooperation or something? I'll tell you, I, I guarantee you, we could go and buy a good one. <laughs> it might be more money, <laughs> but it wouldn't be any more hurdles, I bet. So. All, right. All right, board members, uh, we've got to choose two delegates. Well, we can choose up to two, but for the, uh, the, the annual meeting in Birmingham in early December. Anybody want to volunteer to be a delegate? Randy and who? No, I'm, I'm asking for oh, volunteers. I'm not volunteering. You know, they ask for suggestions. <laughs> Mr. Peppers, are you volunteering?